This video is on ulnar nerve injury or ulnar nerve lesion. So in this I will describe very briefly the structure supplied by ulnar nerve. I have put another video on the ulnar nerve with its origin, course, branches and distribution and I will put the link of that video in the description box of this video. This video will be mainly about the site of injury of ulnar nerve then what will be the motor and sensory loss and the position of the hand. So here briefly showing you here the ulnar nerve, the root value of ulnar nerve is C8 and T1. Uh, in the axilla it gives no branches, in the arm also it doesn't give any branches except sometimes to the elbow joint and in the forearm. In the forearm it supplies two muscles, right? In fact we can say one and a half muscles and these are the flexor carpi ulnaris on the ulnar side and the medial half of the flexor digitorum profundus. Remember ulnar has to be always related to medial side. Remember the ulnar bone is also on the medial side. So ulnar and medial they go hand in hand. So flexor carpi ulnaris muscle and medial half of flexor digitorum profundus these two muscles. Then two cutaneous branches are given and these are the palmar cutaneous branch and the dorsal cutaneous branch. And what are they going to supply? They will supply the medial one third of the palmar surface and the dorsal surface of the hand, not the digits. I'm talking about the palmar surface and the dorsal surface of the hand. So respectively, these two nerves will supply. Then when we come to hand, the nerve divides into a superficial branch and a deep branch. As the name suggests, superficial branch is mainly cutaneous. And this is going to provide the sensory innervation to medial one and a half digits. Right? Medial one and a half digits. But it also supplies one muscle and that muscle is the palmaris brevis. The deep branch, that is the motor branch, will supply 14 muscles. And these are the three muscles of the hypothenar eminence, right? One muscle of the hypothenar eminence is already supplied by the superficial branch. In total, there are four muscles of the hypothenar eminence. So the three muscles here, which are supplied by the deep branch of hypothenar eminence, they are flexor digiti minimi, opponens digiti minimi and abductor digiti minimi. Plus in addition to that, you have to remember this muscle, this is a must, must, uh, you must remember that deep branch of ulnar nerve supplies adductor pollicis, right? So this is one of the thinner eminence muscle that is supplied by ulnar nerve. Which muscle? Adductor pollicis. Adductor pollicis is supplied by deep branch of ulnar nerve. It will also supply the medial two limbricals, that is third and fourth limbricals. And this branch, the deep branch, will also supply all the introsiae, the palmar as well as dorsal introsiae. Now, with this idea of the branches and the structure supplied by the ulnar nerve, let us look at the injury to ulnar nerve. So, which are the sites where the ulnar nerve may get injured? One is at the elbow. So here it may get injured due to fracture of the medial epicondyle. Why is it so? Because the ulnar nerve passes behind the medial epicondyle, right? It is It comes in close relation to the posterior aspect of medial epicondyle. So if it is fractured, obviously the ulnar nerve may also get injured. Second is entrapment between the two heads of flexor carpi ulnaris. Flexor carpi ulnaris takes origin from two heads. One is the humeral head and the other is the ulnar head, right? So the nerve, ulnar nerve, reaches the interior compartment of the forearm from the position behind the medial epicondyle by passing between these two origins of flexor carpi ulnaris, that is the humeral head and the ulnar head. So it may get compressed there. Second site will be at the wrist, right? So because here it becomes superficial, right? It becomes very superficial uh, in the lower uh, part of the forearm and uh, it is vulnerable to cuts and wounds at the wrist because in the upper part of the forearm, it is covered by flexor carpi ulnaris. Then it may get compressed at the Guyon's tendon. 
tunnel. So this Guyon's tunnel, where, where exactly it is present? It is present between the pisiform and the hook of hamate and a fibrous band, which stretches from pisiform to hook of hamate. That actually uh, makes a tunnel that is known as Guyon's tunnel. So there also it may get compressed. So these are the sites, common sites where ulnar nerve may get injured. Now what will happen if it gets injured at the elbow? So let us see. Uh, they, it will result in partial claw hand, right? Not complete claw hand because two fingers will be spared. That is the index finger here and the uh, middle finger. They will not be affected here. Only which fingers will be affected and even the thumb will not be affected. Only fingers that will be affected here, they will be the ring finger and the little finger. Why is it so? Because if you remember uh, in the just before this, I had told you that the medial two limbricals, they are supplied by ulnar nerve, right? And what is the action of limbricals? The action of limbricals is flexion at the metacarpophalangeal joint and extension at the interphalangeal joint, right? So because of the paralysis of this third and fourth limbricle, what will happen? Just the opposite of this. That means there will be hyperextension at the metacarpophalangeal joints of these two digits and there will be flexion at the interphalangeal joint. So here will be flexion, interphalangeal joints and there will be hyperextension at the metacarpophalangeal joint. Now another thing we have to remember here is that the injury is at the elbow, right? So therefore, uh, there will be paralysis of medial half of flexor digitorum profundus muscle also. And the flexor digitorum profundus that is responsible for flexion of the DIP that is distal interphalangeal joint. So the uh, distal interphalangeal joints they will not be flexed here right because we have lost which muscle the medial half of flexor digitorum profundus so the flexion will be more pronounced at the proximal interphalangeal uh, joint and not at the distal interphalangeal joint right so now let us see here what else will be there there will be flattening of the hypothenar uh, eminence because these muscles are supplied by ulnar nerve remember mainly the deep branch and then there will be loss of abduction and adduction of fingers. Why this is so? Because ulnar nerve supplies all the introsia, right? And the palmar introsia are responsible for adduction of the digits and the dorsal introsia are responsible for abduction of the digits. So adduction and abduction of fingers is also lost. What else will be there? there will be sensory loss. Now sensory loss will be only over the digits. That is the palmar surface and the dorsal surface of the medial one and a half digits. No, sorry, here because this is the injury is at the elbow. So we will lose the sensations here also. That is on the medial one third of the palmar surface as well as medial one third of the dorsal surface of hand plus the palmar and the dorsal surface of the digits also, right? One and a half digits. So there will be sensory loss all over here because what happens? The injury is at the elbow. That means the palmar cutaneous branch and the dorsal cutaneous branch, right? They are also affected, right? So I'll repeat, sensory loss will be over the one third of the palmar surface, one third of the dorsal surface of hand plus palmar and dorsal surface of medial one and a half digits. This will happen if the injury is at the elbow. Now, how do we test this? Before I go to the injury at the wrist, let us see how do you test the injury to ulnar nerve. So, this is done by two tests. One is the card test, right? So, a card can be put between two uh, digits here, right? And the patient can be asked to hold that card tightly the patient won't be able to do so. Why? Because the adduction of the digits is not possible, right? Why? We have lost the palmar introsia there. So this is the card test. Second test is the book test. So in this case, what happens? The person is asked to hold the book, right? Between the hand and the thumb. So thumb needs to be adducted, 
right and because the thumb cannot be adducted adductor pollicis is supplied by the deep branch of ulnana right so adductor pollicis will not be able to function so that's why the person will not be able to hold tightly the book between the thumb and the rest of the hand so car test and book test these are the tests to uh, see the injury to ulnar nerve now coming back to the injury uh, this time it is at the wrist level so what happens here if the ulnar nerve is injured at the level of the wrist there will be again partial claw hand you can see here right that means the hyper extension at the metacarpophalangeal joint and flexion at the interphalangeal joint but if you can see the deformity this is much more right pronounced as compared to the injury at the elbow although if the injury to a nerve is at the proximal side right then the distal side then the um, uh, abnormality that should be more pronounced but this is known as ulnar paradox here what happens although the injury is at a distal part or a distal position the deformity is much more pronounced in this case so why this is so this is so because in case of injury at the wrist the nerve supply to the flexor digitorum profundus that is spared right that does not get paralyzed so as a result what will happen the flexor digitorum profundus will flex the dip also right so hyper extension will be there at the metacarpophalangeal joint lumbricals are lost at the pip also flexion will be there because of the lumbricals this thing and at the dip also it will be there because here the flexor digitorum profundus of the medial uh, side that is to these two digits will be also able to function i hope you have understood here the ulnar paradox is that deformity is much more pronounced although the injury is at a distal part right of the nerve rather than at the proximal part loss of adduction abduction will be similar to the injury there because uh, of the paralysis of the interosseous muscles and then there will be loss of sensation now where now the loss of sensation over the palm and the dorsal surface won't be there because these two cutaneous branches that is the palmar cutaneous branch and the dorsal cutaneous branch they are given in the forearm itself before the nerve reaches the wrist so the sensory loss will be only over the palmar surface and the dorsal surface of medial one and a half digits that's all will be there so thank you so much for watching i hope you have liked the video if you have liked it please subscribe it so that i can put more videos like this and if you are interested in knowing the important questions along with the answers in anatomy then please visit my website that is anatomyqa.com thanks again